there are seven things to think about when you look at any map. The first idea is that any map is part of a sequence of maps. And the sequence of maps very often record change. So no matter what map you look at, there was a map last year and the year before and the year before. The second thing about maps is the size at which certain things are represented on the map indicate power. And the iconography of a map is an expression of power. Third point is maps tend to show distribution so that you would get some sense of the distribution of resources, the distribution of people, the distribution of um, routes, some, some distribution aspect. Along with that, especially when you think about routes, is the whole idea of movement. No map um, really is just a static stage. The map is a stage on which things are happening. And that sequence will show you some things that are happening, but there are other things as well. And the, the, the alert map reader will start asking questions. What is happening on this map? What does the cartographer want us to imagine is happening? What else is happening that is being suppressed? Then the sixth point is that there is a spatial context for this map. There's always on a large scale map, a map that comes next to it. If you look at a map of the state of Illinois, there's another map of the state of Indiana, of Wisconsin, Iowa, Kentucky, Missouri. You can go all the way around and you can keep adding on to that context and seeing the map of the Midwest, of the United States, of the North American continent. There's always this layering of spatial context in which a map occurs. And that's very useful, I think, for a student of history to think in terms of what am I looking at? What is the larger context? Similarly, what, there's the, you can zero in on the map, and the, the, the uh, use of the computer is wonderful in that respect. You can get the whole map of North America, but you can zero in, let's say, on the state of Iowa. And all of a sudden, the state of Iowa appears, and then you can go into Des Moines, and the state of Des Moines appears. And you can go into you know, the state capital area in Des Moines. And that, so you can, you can actually get that, that telescoping and see that, uh, that, that, that spatial context, which before computers, took an enormous amount of uh, work and paper. And then finally, relative location. When you put it in spatial context, um, there's a, an absolute location and a relative location for the focal point of the map. And the relative location is how, is how it, it relates to other, other places. Um, what, how do you construct the map to show that this is in the center or at the edges? Um, is it on the periphery of things? Or is it at, the, at, an in, at an intersection? Is it a nexus of power? Uh, so basically those are seven things. To see the map as part of a sequence, to see the map as an exercise in power, to see distributions on a map, to see movement on a map, to see the movement following certain routes on a map, to put this map into a broader and a narrower spatial context, and then to think about relative location, how one can um, relate one particular place to the other places around it.